Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. How are you doing? Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, and I'm back with legendary investor, value investor, Greg Dickerson. How are you doing, sir? I am here. I'm here. How are you doing, Michael? I'm doing well. Hey, so for the first time, this would be the first, something I, I haven't done before, is I'm actually going to acknowledge that I think there are a couple of bubbles forming in the residential real estate market. And uh, this is, you know, again, first time I'm doing this, uh, I'm, I'm talking about real estate slowdown, there's no crash. But at this point, I've done enough poking around that I do think there's a couple of markets uh, and maybe even more because I don't know them all that are bubbles and could be in for a, uh, a nice uh, adjustment, if you will. What do you think? Oh, uh, yeah, I think so. It's, you know, real estate's hyper local. So there's always, you know, one side of the, of the story or the other in any market at any given time. Yeah. So when I've been looking at markets, because again, you're so right, real estate's hyper local. That's why I talk about learn your market, do the work, you know, all of that. Um, but when I look at markets, I really look at markets that have been most impacted by what's happened the last 14 months. They are probably a tertiary market, so not a big city. But tertiary meaning, you know, they, they're very small population-wise compared to, a, you know, millions of people. Most in impacted it. in what way? Now, I'm going to get to that, right? Okay. So basically what I like, the, the biggest example that I've mentioned a couple of times would be Boise, Idaho, right? Boise, Idaho is not a, a market that has a lot of new construction. Uh, it's been a market that when I looked at it over the last 10 years has been pretty flat for both new construction, population growth, uh, and home appreciation, right? Generally speaking, right? It's, it's, it's kind of the boring curve like that. And then what happened uh, over the last 14, maybe 16 months is that market has become a destination for out-of-state investors. I'll pick on California. That's where I'm residing. Lots of California money has come in to a market that was not prepared, the, the demand essentially tripled into a, into a market that didn't have the supply and didn't have plans for, to grow, right? Wasn't, home builders weren't building hundreds and thousands of new homes. Uh, so in, you know, when you go, when you have a lot of cash rich buyers coming into a market with very small inventory available, because yes, it may have a lot of homes, but it's only the homes that are available for sale, you see dramatic rises in value. So Boise, Idaho, I think was up like 49% in a 12 month period. That kind of stuff, uh, in my opinion, is, is what bubbles are made of. So that, that's an example. Yeah, so it depends on who the buyers are and what they're doing. My guess is they're buying investment properties because they're less expensive and renting them out. Yeah, no, at least based on my research, these are the uh, either, it depends on what they want to say. It could be second home buyers that are getting out of California because of all the lockdowns and all this nonsense or they're selling their Palo Alto home and moving to Boise because it's picturesque and all of that. Uh, so they're basically buying for cash in a lot of cases, at least historically speaking, cash buys are up in Boise. Um, mm. But yeah, it's just it, that kind of move that fast doesn't feel sustainable to me. Yeah, we're already seeing a lot of a lot of you know halfbacks, right, or snapbacks yeah. or whatever you want to call yeah, them. You know, backs, yeah. over here on the east coast, we call them halfbacks, where you know ah. people move from the northeast down into the south, and then they come back. Go too far south, and they go halfway back because it's too ah. hot. Oh, when I got change you. the season. Halfbacks, that's good. So yeah. they go from New York to Florida back to North Carolina. Yeah, like exactly. That. In ah. the Carolinas, yeah, because yeah. they want to change the season. It's too hot in Florida and crazy or whatever. So halfbacks. Awesome. Switch, you know, switchbacks are what's happening in New York, right? Yeah. So pandemic is somewhat over. We do have the Delta caveat out there that's flaring back up. Um, that could be a problem. We'll see how this whole thing develops. But um, and you guys are back to mask mandates, right? In California. Yeah, it just happened. Yeah. Over the weekend. Yeah. Florida's talking about it. Uh, Vegas just went to it. So uh, interesting times. But anyways, a lot of people left New York because of everything. Yeah. And now that everything's open back up, that people are going back. I mean, they're having the biggest boom in housing in New York than they've had in a long yeah, time. They have, I mean, it's on yeah. fire. E even the commercial space. I don't know if you saw it, but I saw it yeah. like a week ago, the most, res the most, I don't know, retail office or retail leasing uh, last retail month. Retail and restaurant leasing. Yeah. yeah. Retail and discounts, yeah. discounts, oh, lowest sure. rates ever oh, in the yeah. history of New York, but they're but, leasing. But they're not empty. You know, and <laughs> exactly. Now, whoever's signing those leases, if you're watching this, Check the fine print because you're only going to get that discount this year. Yeah, <laughs> Next exactly. year is going to be a different story. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I guarantee there's an escalation clause in there. But, yeah, somewhere. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyhow, it's really interesting and fascinating. So yeah, it'll be, and, and there's also a lot of um, buyer's remorse of a lot yeah. of people that have bought houses in this market, very competitively, sight unseen. Oh, they either yeah. paid too much, they bought too small. 
they yeah. bought the wrong thing. They don't like where they moved. They didn't know the area people, and they bought a picture. They didn't know the area. Oh. So the whole grass is greener. Let's just get out of the city. Get let's go here. to Boise yeah. and let's raise our kids. And they get there and they're like, there ain't no kids. Yeah. yeah. What's going on? Yeah. Right. Why did, why did we pick Idaho? No, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. Boise, yeah, I, I think, know. is a beautiful place. I've never oh, yeah, been, been, don't know anything about it. But yeah, but it's beautiful. I've been it there. could be wonderful. And a lot of people were moving there. But, but if yeah, you have expectation of, people, of A and it comes out Z, that's going to be a surprise. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, that could create a problem where a lot of people all of a sudden change their minds and decide they want to get out. And then all of a sudden you have all this inventory hit the market and you don't have another, enough people following behind them. So, you know, that can create some issues in a housing market. Yeah. The other area that I think is getting really hot, and I've never talked about this before, is, is it looks like Airbnb is on fire, mm-hmm. right? I, again, my, my social media feed has been huge number of new Airbnb folks. And Anna Kelly, uh, who I talked to Wednesdays, I think, um, you know, she's obviously big in Airbnb. She just sold her place on the, on South Carolina, I think it is. And she's going, she's 1030 wanting to Florida. Um, but she's like, you got some of these values for Airbnb. Cause again, like last year, March or April, everybody sold them because they didn't know what was going on. Now they proved to be the best investment ever. And people are booking, you know, 30 days in a row. Um, I think that's, I think it's a bubble for me because what we've seen today is a lot of domestic travel, a lot of driving for vacations. I'm going to guess this time next year, we're finally getting on international flights. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of people going to Asia and Europe and, you know, South America and Australia and all these places. So um, I don't know. I, I, I think there's some Airbnb markets that are pretty richly valued. Yeah. And it's just not just Airbnb. There's traditional vacation markets. And yeah, mm-hmm. all the ones around me that I'm familiar with that I've, I've bought and sold in over my you know 20 year history. Uh, the mountain area, um, and then down at the coast, they've been on fire because people just, you know, they're just short-sighted. They're like, hey, I just want to get this. So we've got somewhere we can go, whether it's investment or whatever. But yeah, those markets have been on fire and same thing, you know, and really those areas, especially like a a resort area, like the Outer Banks of North Carolina, a coastal summer beach vacation destination where you have a very small year-round population, but it grows by 30 times in the summer, you know, I mean, there's 30, 40,000 people year round down there and it gets up to 800,000 people a week going through wow. there, you know, in the summer, it's huge. Um, you know, so those houses just sit vacant. But anyways, that's always been the most unmotivated seller's market I've ever known because people are like, I'll put it on the market. I'll ask what I'll ask. If it sells great, if it doesn't, we get rent and it doesn't matter. Mm. They've been selling and, you know, low inventory record levels down there. It's been incredible. And yeah, 18 months ago, when we got shut down, you couldn't even go there. They closed yeah. the bridge. They closed it down, yeah. Yeah, so you couldn't even go. So Airbnbs were just taking a beating. And uh, and now, you know, they're they're wildly popular. People want to own them. They want to go stay. And again, it's like you said, RVing is up. Yeah. But I think all these things are, you know, short-lived. It's just because I wanted to take my daughter to Spain this year. She wanted to go or Italy. And we didn't because we could have. But it's just so uncertain in terms of the restrictions and the difficulty and logistics and lack of flight options. Yeah. And I was just like, you know what? We'll just wait till next year. Next we'll time, all, honey. You know, it'll, be, it'll be nicer next time. Yeah. Yeah. It's all <laughs> open back up, you know, and hopefully everything's behind us. But yeah, yeah I'm, I mean, I know a lot of people like that that just aren't doing it right now. Yeah. The other thing I'm seeing in Airbnb, I just saw this. There's a, there's a site, I think it's called Real Deal. It's mm-hmm. very real. It's very commercial real estate oriented. It's a web, website I look at every day. Uh, there's actually a, um, I guess it's a condo tower in Florida that has historically looked the other way for short-term rentals. Because in the um, TCNRs, I think they're called CCNRs, CCNRs, it says that you, you, the minimum stay is 30 days. Apparently, they've looked the other way. Now they've seen that over a third of their units are used for weekends or three-day stays. They're suing, right? They're going to get a. There's an owner that's suing because. Um, they've actually seen a hit in value. So I think, I think there's cities and buildings that are going to start enforcing rules. And um, I think there's, I think there's more pain for, for some Airbnb owners coming because of the yeah, a lot of neighborhoods and subdivisions have restrictions and things like that. And uh, but those, you know, those have been popular back in the day, it was traditional rental companies. Mm-hmm. And then VRBO was the first one to come around. Yep. Um, and then Airbnb took off. VRBO is still out there, but it's not as popular. And, I, I don't know if they're, if they merge or what, but, you know, I don't really do much with the. You know, yeah. They're still there, but, but 
they they were first movers and then uh, Airbnb out marketed them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I still, you know, for that kind of stuff, I still use traditional, uh, you know, professional property management companies. I just I don't want to deal with that stuff. Yeah, but, me neither. Um, the other interesting thing that I've seen, the business model that's out there is fractional ownership for oh, vacation yeah. resort homes, for you're second right. homes. You're right. Yeah, where, and you're not even renting them out. It's just, hey, you want to have a second home you can go to any time, but you can't afford a, you know, million dollar or $10 million house. Then you sell fractional ownership shares mm -hmm. and it's managed by a professional manager and anybody can go stay and you just kind of book it through that and everything's handled uh, yeah. from the management standpoint. So that's an interesting business model as well. But um, you can also rent those. You can also do the same thing and rent them out if the you know ownership group wants to do that. So that's another way that uh, those types of properties are, are you know, being sold and, and it's a wildly popular business model. Yeah. The other thing that's going on is um, there's obviously this, the, the move from the North to the South, right? I kind of mm -hmm. call it the smile States that, that got uh, reinvigorated. I, it'll be interesting that halfback, I thought that was an interesting, right? New York to Florida, back to the Carolinas. I thought that was pretty cool. It'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, the folks moving to Vegas or Arizona or Texas, um, you know, if they go after a year or two, they're like, not what I thought it was going to be. It'll be interesting. Well, yeah, and I've heard people, I've, uh, you know, I have one guy that I'm, I'm working with that I'm coaching and um, he went from California to Texas and he's like, I don't like it. <laughs> it's too hot. <laughs> too hot. I need to get back to the water. So he wants to go to Florida. So it's, it's oh, really okay. So he's going to keep going that way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's going to be interesting. I, I think, I do think there are bubbles forming. I do not, as we talked about in episode number two, I think the national housing market, when you look at the stats is certainly compared to 06, it's, it's healthy. I mean, affordability is great. Affordability is actually better today than 06. It's, it's, it's great. And it's all interesting. Yeah. The reverse exodus will be interesting. What kind of pressure, and it's going to depend on the area and the town and how many yeah. people leave at once. If they all come at once, like they did and, and leave at once. Yeah. It could be a real problem for an area. And that's, that's what happens, right? The you know, markets yeah. are hyper local and uh, you just never know. I mean, there's some areas right now you can't buy a house, no matter what you offer, there's yep. 20 offers on it. And mm -hmm. there's areas now you can't give them away. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, yeah, the just, market, the really market, interesting. the market near me that I'm looking for, looking at, it's really, it's again, it's a hyper local market is actually Lake Tahoe, California. Mm -hmm. It's a really small market. It's, it's not even tertiary. It's like a town almost. Right. I think there's like 50,000 homes or, I mean, it's like a really small number. It got flooded with Bay area folks buying second homes, right? We're out of here. We're going to go, we're going to go, we're going to go be by the lake for a year. Uh, once that trend ends it, and it goes the other way, yeah, I just, that's going to be a lot of inventory that's just sits there, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's in those vacation markets are usually the first ones to take a hit. Like I said, that's where I was at 0405. So you're, you referenced the video earlier that uh, the guy was talking about the 06 peak of the housing market and bubble yep. for us, it was 0405. And that's what happens. A lot of times these vacation resort destinations need yep. the, um, you know, the national year round housing market. Totally agree. Yeah, exactly. Because again, why think about it, people start looking at their family balance sheet, and they're like, hmm, do we really need that second home? It's it's one of the first easy things to, to cut, if you will. Yeah, and it used to be where we were at, you know, the, the status symbol in New York and Wall Street and all that was how big is your beach house and where yeah. is your beach house and all that. I mean, it was a status symbol. And sure. then, you know, that totally changed after 2008 and nine. people got yeah. rid of those. You couldn't give away a beach house. Wow, crazy to think about. Wish I could buy those now uh, at those prices. Uh, so this has been a lot of fun today, Greg. Uh, how can people follow you? Be part of your world. So gregdickerson.com, all of my information's there. YouTube channel, podcast. I put out content every day on entrepreneurship, real estate, investing, development, uh, buying companies, investing in markets, cryptos, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, dude, do yourself a favor, follow, follow Miss Greg Dickerson. He is the definition of an entrepreneur and investor. Uh, my channel is just about real estate. Well, follow him, I do. Uh, thanks, buddy. It was good to see you again. You got it.